Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is for Behavioral Science 3010, Statistics for the Behavioral Sciences at Utah Valley University. In this video, we're looking at the first practice test for Chapter 6 on sampling distributions. The first question on this test is, if a distribution of raw scores has a strong negative skew, then, given a sufficiently large n, or sample size, the sampling distribution of means for that distribution will a have a strong negative skew, b be normal, c be uniform, or d have a strong positive skew. So we start with strong negative skew, we get a sampling distribution, and what does it look like? Well the answer is it's going to be normally distributed, it'll be a bell curve. Um, a have a strong negative skew, that's if you're standardizing the distribution. That just changes the numbers written across the bottom. The shape stays the same if you're standardizing, but we're getting a sampling distribution. It turns it into a bell curve. It doesn't make it uniform, and it certainly doesn't reverse the skew. Here's the process. We've seen this one before. We have our very unusual looking distribution. I, I'm not showing you a negatively skewed distribution. I'm just showing you a strange distribution. But you see, by the time we're done with it at the bottom right, we've turned into a perfect bell curve nearly. And that's going to happen with almost any distribution with a sufficiently large sample. Number two, the standard error is A, the standard deviation of the sampling distribution, B, the measure of sample bias, C, the population mean divided by n minus 1, and D, a common mistake in coding responses. Well, the answer is A, the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. I'll show you that in a second. Now, there are measures of sample bias, but they're not called the standard error. Um, and we won't cover them in this course. It got, that comes up in what's called psychometrics. Um, C, the population mean divided by n minus 1. You know, that, that's just something I made up. It starts, it feels a little bit like the uh, formula for the standard deviation, but that's not it. And then D, a common mistake in coding responses. Well, that would be a standard error of kinds, but um, no, that's just something I made up. Here's the standard error. What you have is a distribution that is made through a sampling process. And then you see how this one says, we have right there in the middle on the bottom says the mean estimate of effect or, or mean from many samples. And then you see how it's got distances marked off in standard errors. We have one standard error to the left, two standard errors. And it's also marking off the middle 95% with this 1.96 standard errors. Um, we're going to talk about that more when we get to inferential statistics, but that is the standard deviation of a sampling distribution is called the standard error. Number three, the distribution of all possible sample means of a given size is called A, the distribution of means, B, the distribution of samples, C, the sampling distribution of means, or D, the population of raw scores. Well, you know, I was just talking about it at C, the sampling distribution of means. The distribution of means, you know, yes, that's an idea here, but it's, that leaves out the sampling process through which it's created, so that doesn't count. Distribution of samples, you know, you have to say what it is that you're distributing from the samples. And the population of raw scores, well, that's the original population that you're starting with that you get your samples from. We end up with, we have a sampling distribution of means. And again, here's the process. You take lots of means, excuse me, you take lots of samples, you get their means, their averages, and then that becomes your data for creating a new distribution. That's the sampling distribution of means. Number four, if a distribution has a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15, then what's the standard error for a sample of 225 scores? Choices are 1, 125, 15, or cannot be calculated without additional information. The answer to this one is 1, and it's a little bit of a trick question because it turns out that the mean, knowing the mean, is irrelevant. All you need is the formula for the standard error. So SE for standard error is equal to the standard deviation divided by the square root of n, or the sample size. So in this case, the standard deviation is 15, and the sample is 225. So we have SE is 15 divided by square root 225. So that's 15, and the square root of 225 is 15. So 15 divided by 15 is 1, and that's our standard error. The mean is irrelevant to this one. Number five, if a distribution has a mean of 30 and a standard deviation of 3, then what's the z-score for a sample of four scores with a mean of 27? Choices are negative 3, negative 2, positive 2, and 1.5. 
Well, in this case, the answer is negative 2. Let's take a look at how the formula works. Again, I find it helpful to use a two-step process where first you get the standard error and then you do the z-score. The standard error is the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So in this case, the standard deviation was 3, the sample size is 4, square root of 4 is 2, so we have 3 divided by 2 is equal to 1.5. That's the standard error. It's not, it's, that's a step in what we're getting. Then we need the z-score. The z is going to be uh, the difference between the mean of the sample and the mean of the population, so we do subtraction there. That's what the m is for mean and the s and the p are for sample and population. And we divide that by the standard error. So we get 27 minus 30 divided by 1.5 is equal to minus 3 divided by 1.5 is equal to negative 2. And that's it for our first practice test.